Welcome back, William Wynn, Fly Corps Bear. Today, oil analysis. I have with me Larry Nelson. How are you doing, William? Introduce yourself, Larry. I'm Larry Nelson. I'm, I work for uh, LNC Labs, is my company. Uh, my day job is actually work for U.S. Army Test and Evaluation, doing oil analysis on military test vehicles. Here's your expert on oil analysis. He's also a Corvair engine guy, built and flies his own Zenith uh, 601. HDS, uh, great flying airplane, flies out of Yuma, but more importantly for you, he's our oil analysis expert. This is the guy that we've selected and worked with for years to analyze the oil for your Corvair motor. So we have a serious program going on and we consider it mandatory to comply with it. What we want you to do is two oil analysis a year at a minimum, one at your annual, one at the six month mark. If you fly more often than that, and hopefully you do, we want it done every 50 hours. It's a small expense, you take a sample. Yeah, samples are easily taken in one of two ways. Either you can buy a uh, pump gun from me, they're $30, and you can actually remove the oil directly from the dipstick hole so you don't even have to open your cowling up. I recommend you open the cowling because then you can inspect everything but it's an easy way to take a really quick sample if you're flying more often. The other way is you want to take a midstream sample, so let the oil drain for a couple of seconds, and then just pull it as you're taking your normal oil change. Uh, this is a procedure that makes a lot of sense. Cutting open oil filters, we've shown people how to do that for years. That's comparatively like working with a stethoscope. What Larry does is like an MRI and a CAT scan on your engine. He can catch stuff way before you have any problems. But more importantly, if you're doing this as part of an inspection, he's bringing the high tech to the inspection. When you do this procedure, uh, you can take a look at it. We develop a history of your engine to work with. Let's say at some future date, you've got a question about how it's operating. The first thing we're gonna do is look at your history with Larry and take a look at it. If your engine has a clean bill of health on previous oil analysis, we can tell you that it's probably something external. Without oil analysis, if we're at a remote location and you're telling us about some problem, then we're going to have to seriously consider recommending you inspect the inside of the engine. For $15 a shot, oil analysis twice a year could preclude you from ever getting a recommendation from us to take a look inside the engine. No, that's right. We've also been doing a lot of trend analysis, right? I have been on a lot, just specifically the core of air motors. And so we're getting a very large and good database on what's normal for all of the different displacements for bears. So I actually know what's normal, what's abnormal, and some of the things that we've actually seen just in the development of the different types of uh, new systems that we're bringing into the core bear. We're seeing very specific things that are showing us both good performance and improper installations. Okay, so this is a really important check. When somebody just builds an engine, for the first time, and they do that one hour break and run. Do you want an oil sample from no. that? No. The problem is, is that there's too much material just from the uh, just from the building the engine itself. So you actually want to wait until about your 10 hour mark to take your first okay. sample. So no oil sample from the first hour, no. just cut the filter. No oil sample at the five hour mark, cut the filter also. But when we get to the 10 hour mark on the engine, you want an oil sample from that. That's correct, because up to that point, there's still a lot of the material left from just the assembly lubes, any type of contamination that got in during the build, and those things can skew the oil analysis and give us information that is not necessarily going to point us in a direction that is showing us the health of the motor. So if somebody gives you one from the 10-hour mark, the 25-hour mark, and their first 50-hour mark, when they get those three, you got a trend going at that point. That's correct, and what you'll be able to see from those is we're looking at the number, of, or actually it's the parts per million of each of these elements, and we actually look at it on a per hour basis. And if your engine is operating properly, you shouldn't see any real shift in the amount of metal that you're generating every hour of operation. So you'll see it as a standardized value for each increment of time. Okay, so this is really high-tech equipment that he's using. There is no way there's any comparison to cutting the filter open. This can look and see stuff that would take several more oil changes to show up as a problem. In short, you can head off problems. That's correct. 
Uh, the other thing that we look at that's different from all most other oil analysis companies. So if you go to let's say aircraft spruce and you buy a metal check kit, it's only looking at the wear metals. What we're doing that's different is we're looking at, at both wear metals, viscosity, and then I'm throwing in one because I think it's important for especially for Corvair builders or aircraft owners in general is thermal breakdown products. And that's going to tell us if, we're, if the engine is operating at too high of an oil temperature for too long of a period of time. And that's another thing that we trend to show that whether or not you're actually you know, operating within the recommended temperature ranges for your engine. And importantly, the great majority of oil analysis that you do comes back with a healthy checkup. Correct. Typically, you expect to see about 80% of every oil sample that goes through the lab is going to give you a thumbs up check. It's a 20% that we're really worried about. Okay, and if you were doing this as a regular basis, it would probably be uh, closer to 100% okay if you built the engine correctly. If you're doing an annual and you get the report back on the annual from Larry, it adds an extra degree of confidence to know that you ran a professional program, you checked it, and your engine's in good shape to the maximum uh, uh, ability to tell with high-tech materials. Again, we have a classic engine that we chose simplicity, but the way that we run the program is using the highest tech stuff available to us. And in this case, the high tech is available for a whopping $15 a sample. This is a tiny fraction of the cost of operating your aircraft per year, but it is a very, very large increase in effective risk management. That's right. So, in, in summary, we're going to be doing this at least twice a year on every Corvair engine. We consider it mandatory. We can't force you to do it. It's just common sense. But I'm going to tell you, when I'm working with builders in the future, this is going to be the hallmark of a well-run program where I can tell anybody that the history of your engine is well cared for. Now, William, as a side note, you don't have to just do it as oil change. You know, me personally, if I'm going on a long cross-country flight, I'll go out and I'll pull some oil just to double check before I'm flying halfway across the country, just to give me a peace of mind before I take off. Good point. So, for more information on this, check out our other videos on oil changes here on the channel. Coming to you from the 2019 Zenith Aircraft Homecoming. Thanks very much, Larry. Thank you.